Hello, what's up? Hope you're well. Um, just a little bit of a random thing that I saw on the internet today that there's going to be a PlayStation, possible PlayStation 5 Pro reveal um, at 4 o'clock. So I thought we would just have a quick look. <clears throat> we'll get the chat off there. It's presented by Mark Cerny. They did one of these with the PlayStation 4 Pro, I believe. Um, I actually had a PlayStation 4 Pro, and it was it was a good machine. It kind of it was a lot quieter. It introduced the ability to be able to pick between prioritizing frame rate or, or fidelity mode. That's why anyone who made the jump from a standard PlayStation 4 to PS5 would see more of a difference be being able to ch change between fidelity and frame rate. Whereas if you had a PlayStation 4 Pro and you went to the PlayStation 5, you didn't really see a big sort of, um, you were kind of used to that choice of being able to pick fidelity or frame rate. Um, the PlayStation 5 Pro, would I get one? I don't know. I, I would say... I'd say no, but I know what I'm like. I know what I'm like. I would just be like, fuck it, let's just fucking get one. And then I could put the PlayStation 5 downstairs in the, in the living room. Um, and then I've got a PlayStation 5, you know, downstairs and upstairs. Um, my Series X is downstairs at the moment, using that as a skybox at the moment. Also play on the sofa, play Game Pass games and stuff. So this is about nine minutes long. It's not going to be very long. I don't know even if I don't even know if we're going to be able to see the sort of fidelity if they're going to show anything because you know you need to have. Hi, I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, PlayStation 5 Pro, wow. and how it advances Straight gaming it. technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. Eight Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU which can render anything from intricate details to fantastic worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds, and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. You okay? I'm working on it. Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound of the games. With audio so real, you may not even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with graphics modes. It can be a difficult choice for players. Very difficult. Why always go performance? Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. But why can't you have both? If These modes both, might also I'm have enhanced sold. detail or use more ray tracing. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier 60 and the controls FPS, less responsive. Full fucking fidelity Performance mode. modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, Would be amazing. typically choosing to run at 60 frames per second. mainly by reducing the graphical detail until those frame rates can be achieved. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing that decision, or at least narrowing that divide, is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. Yes. We want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. 
To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing, taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. And finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR for short. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. Game creators are adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles, and with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing, with graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but it doubled the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part Two running on PS5 Pro. It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. Now this is on Let's YouTube, so we, we can't see the benefit of it. You know, we, which is only running at 30 4, frames per reveal. second and is therefore much choppier. This goal of delivering almost fidelity-like graphics at performance frame rates has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5, both of which target 60 frames per second. What we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene, including the trees and procedural cars. So overall, some remarkable improvement to the games. On PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics or smoother and more responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics power is allowing for improvements to lighting and visual effects, as well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Jorah's orders. Good enough for me. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well, particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates. The faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray-traced reflections between the cars in gameplay, while continuing to support their targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy, allowing not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. Still need to play that. I hope you've enjoyed this run-through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built, and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. You'll never break a legend. Oh, is this it? Is this the beast?
I know what I'm seeing is like, it's, it's impressive, but I'm expecting it to be a lot more impressive when YouTube releases a fucking 4K video, because this is live. And YouTube sort of downgrades its videos. Fucking hell. Wow, that's fucking expensive. That is fucking expensive. 700 quid. I do not know if I could justify... Um, I don't know if I could justify 700 quid. Including Marvel's Spider-Man 2. And Ratchet and Clank rift apart. We can oh, see man. that PS5 I don't, I don't Pro know, is close uh, to... I do not know if I can justify. Let's just see. Fucking watch. Just, just watch. Honestly, watch. Watch uh, Twitter just blow up. No, we don't want to try X Pro. Fuck off. Six hundred and ninety nine US dollars. Holy shit, LOL. Where's everyone from? PS Pro arrives November for seven hundred dollars. Six hundred I cannot honestly I cannot get over that. I really can't get over that. He's gotta have a terabyte in there for for fucking that that price. Has to. Vertical stand sold separately as well. November the 7th. <clears throat> no disk drive. Yeah, no disk drive. Digital only. Wow. That That is... That's crazy. Just some of these comments already. Look, guys just put there, no disk drive. I've just noticed it hasn't got a disk drive. It hasn't got a disk drive and it's 700 quid. Where are the pre-orders? Seven hundred pound. Fuck right off. How much storage though? That's something else. How much storage? It's got to be a terabyte at least. Has to be. Way too expensive for the incremental upgrade shown. Pretty disappointed with this reveal. Fuck off. LOL. Without a stand and disk drive. I mean, fucking hell. That's brutal. No disk. Why this is absolutely pointless? If Sony actually dropped the PS. The PS4, this console wouldn't be needed. That's a fucking amazing point. <coughs> That's an amazing point. And let's just get into that. Now, the PlayStation I've got a I've got a launch PlayStation 5. It's it's a digital version, right? It's digital. I got it at launch. The biggest disappointment I've got with this generation is the fact that PlayStation are still supporting the PlayStation 4 Pro with games like, you know, well, you could, loads of games. There's only a, there's only a handful of games that aren't on PlayStation 4 Pro. Sorry, PlayStation 4. Most games are still being supported by the PlayStation 4. So, in in theory, the PlayStation 4 is holding back the PlayStation 5. If they just stopped that, if they said, right, if you want to move move ahead in the generation and you want to buy a PlayStation 5, you're going to have to leave your PlayStation 4 behind and say goodbye to it. You've had lo a lovely 10 years with it, but now it's time to move on. And that's why I'm, I'm dubious about buying a PlayStation 6, because if they're going to support the PlayStation 5... When the PlayStation 6 comes out, they're going to still support the PlayStation 5, which they will, which they will. What is the point in jumping in and buying a PlayStation 6 straight away when they're going to support the PlayStation 5 until its last dying breath? And and let's say, I mean, even if you were to get the PlayStation 5 Pro, you know, a couple of years later, we're going to have the PlayStation 6. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 crazy. It's crazy, but 700 quid, 700 quid, fucking hell, 700 quid, Jesus, 700 pounds, 
700 pounds, no disk drive, which is crazy, and um, it doesn't come with a stand. I mean, you think they'd throw the stand in for 700 quid. I am surprised. I'm surprised. I genuinely thought, genuinely thought that that was going to be 600 quid max. They can keep it. That was it, yikes. That's crazy, but I'll definitely be sold out. Gotta love the inflation. I just got my PS5 last year. L. I mean, fucking L. 800 euros. That is absolutely crazy. 700 quid. Fucking hell. 700 quid. I can't, honestly, I cannot believe that. I cannot believe that. 800 euros. Look, I'm already on record and saying I'm going to trade my launch PS5 in for the Pro solely for GTA 6. I care about GTA 6 that much. But in my honest, humble opinion, Cerny didn't sell it as that well. It was basically stuff in the background looks clearer with better frame rates. I know, he didn't really... I mean, it was a nine-minute video and he basically just said, yeah, you can see it's a bit more detailed in the distance and the frame rates are a bit better. £700, please. It's, it's fucking crazy. Could have thrown in the stand at that price, lads. I, I genuinely think that they are going to get absolutely dragged for this. I genuinely think they're going to get absolutely dragged for this. This is just going to be so negative. And I, th I think they'll drop the price. I think they'll drop the price. The PS5 Pro will launch November 7th for 700 quid. It won't have a disk drive. First 4K images of the PlayStation 5 Pro. I mean, it's smart. It looks nice. But I don't know how they've fucking arrived at that price point. If the PS5 Pro is backwards compatible with all previous PlayStations, trust me, Xbox is cooked. Oh, fuck off with you, fanboy bollocks. I have absolutely zero, no zero. I have absolutely zero interest in the PlayStation 5 Pro. Those who are generally curious as to why, because shiny new toy, because devices, because like to have the newest things, because you can. I mean, you don't need a reason. If people are going to buy it, then more power to them. I can't, I'm, I'm so, 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 so surprised. I am so surprised at that. Fuck. <laughs> Witness play unleashed. I mean, how about, like, coming in with a fucking opinion, Jeff? Do you know what I mean? Instead of being a f fucking corporate... Sony just officially announced the PlayStation 5 Pro. Wow. <coughs> wow. I mean, it comes out in November. What, what month are we in now? September. October. So it comes out in three months. Three months' time it comes out. I, I genuinely... <clears throat> Excuse me. I like having the newest stuff. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I bought the fucking PlayStation fucking earbuds. I've got the PlayStation VR 2. I've just had... I've got the PlayStation fucking Portal, which I use religiously downstairs when she's watching her apps, you know, Gossip Girl and all that sort of shit. 
And I like having new things. I like having the DualSense Edge. Do you know what I mean? The Xbox fucking Elite Series 2 controller. The Nintendo Switch OLED. I, I like having new stuff. I like having the latest shit. But 700 quid... I don't know if I could justify that. I really don't. I really don't know if I could justify that. And you would have to pre-order through PlayStation. If they did some sort of like pay pay in- installments, then yeah, I'd be I'd be in. I'd be all in. I would be all in. But I cannot. I cannot. There's no way I could justify that. Yeah, we're we're going through a fucking cost of living crisis. It's very rare I'll buy a video game now. I've, like, the last game I bought was um, Star Wars Outlaws. You know, and I've just bought Astro Bot, and I sort of think, fucking hell, like I need to calm down because I want to get Space Marine Two, I want to get the casting of Frank Stone, you know, I want to get Call of Duty, you know, it's 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 it's, uh, but that's it, gaming. It's an expensive hobby, and if if it's your hobby, it's your hobby. Do you know what I mean? I'm sat I'm sat here in this house with I've got a PlayStation Five digital, I've got a, a Nintendo Switch OLED, I've got a, a, a monstrous PC which I fucking paid through the nose for but it's an absolute beast I've got an Xbox Series X downstairs as well so I like having I'm not this isn't just like oh I played I'm, I'm, I play Call of Duty uh, and FIFA um, I, you know I'm a casual gamer I'm not a casual gamer core gamer been playing video games since I was four and I'm just wondering if I can justify playing paying that money for, for a PlayStation 5 Pro. That's not what I expected, honestly. I'm, I'm really shocked by that. I, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm very, very shocked. Like, very, very shocked that, that, that it's cost that much. Like I said, no disk drive. So, if you're a physical media person, you can't have a PlayStation 5 Pro. If you're a physical disk person, forget it. But maybe this is the way things are going. The Xbox Series X, Series X are bringing out a new Xbox Series console without a disk drive, and that's the same price as a fucking Series X. So I don't understand. I don't understand. But Sony will be watching this to see the reactions. I mean, it'll depend on the games media people, like Kind of Funny, Sacred Symbols, you know, Giant Bomb, IGN. It'll it'll depend. You know, I hope these guys sort of call out the price. And that Sony maybe have a rethink. Um, but yeah, 700 fucking quid, man. Fucking hell. Just to have slightly better visuals, slightly better frame rate, 700 quid. I, I think it's I think it's crazy. I think that is absolutely crazy. But I, I feel like I'm ranting now. Damn. 700 quid. 